Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lepakshi Kurana. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Monday, the 5th of September. Bangladesh PM Hasina arrives in India for four day visit, meets Foreign Minister Jay Shankar. Pakistan stares at shortages, disease outbreaks due to floods, death toll tops 1300. And Sri Lanka built to trim President's powers likely to become law soon, says Foreign Minister. And now for all the details, Bangladesh Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina arrived in New Delhi on Monday for a four-day state visit to India to further cement the multifaceted relationship between the two countries. PM Hasina is scheduled to meet her Indian counterpart Narendra Modi on Tuesday and both sides are expected to ink at least seven bilateral agreements in areas like water management, railway and science and technology. Issues on top of the agenda are upgrading defence cooperation and expanding regional connectivity. Upon her arrival, she held a meeting with the Indian Foreign Minister S.J. Shankar. The visit comes as Bangladesh has sought loans from global agencies amid a fall in its reserves and surging import cost. Hasina has however claimed her country's economy is still strong. Bangladesh is India's biggest trade partner in South Asia and the bilateral trade between the two countries has grown from 9 billion to 18 billion US dollars in the last five years. Residents of India's tech capital Bengaluru in Karnataka state faced water logging and huge traffic jams on Monday as torrential rains slashed the city. The weather department has warned of incessant rainfall till 9 September across Karnataka, raising fears of further disruptions through the week. Large parts of India's tech capital Bengaluru were underwater on Monday after torrential rains lashed the city causing crippling traffic disruptions and prompting several offices to issue work from home orders to employees. Visuals showed a man being stuck in a heavily waterlogged area who was later rescued by locals and security guards. The city is home to companies such as Amazon, Flipkart and Wipro all of whom run logistics and other operations from there. Chaos prevailed as daily commuters had to wade through waterlogged roads or were stuck in long traffic jams. I never thought that in Bangalore this much of drainage I had to face. And again, I thought that I would be able to cross it. But again, it's my stupidity. I would have done work from home and I'm coming just to go to my workplace. The Indian Meteorological Department has warned of thunderous rainfall till September 9 across Karnataka, including Bengaluru, while civil authorities get up to cope with the challenges. Incessant trains have continued in the state for about a month. Well, in news from Pakistan, people in flood-affected areas of Pakistan are facing food shortages and disease outbreaks while the authorities struggle with relief operations. It has flowed in from a number of countries, but charities in Pakistan have warned that there are still millions who are yet to receive some sort of relief. A wedding hall in the Pakistani town of Johi once received hundreds of joyful revelers. Now it is receiving hundreds of sick patients suffering from the effects of flooding that has inundated Pakistan, leaving the country battling with a relief and rescue operation of near unprecedented scale. Johi in the hardest hit Sindh province remains cut off from road excess. The dead toll across Pakistan due to the historic flooding following record monsoon rains climbed past 1300 on Monday after 24 more deaths were recorded. Roshan Ali Khan, a doctor at the makeshift clinic which provides treatment free of charge, said they are treating up to 800 patients a day. Residents in Johi said their biggest concern is now the lack of food, as all crops in the area have been destroyed, while many areas are still cut off due to flood waters. Sara talka dub gaya hai. Kuch bhi nahi bacha hai. Idhar saare jo log hai, idhar khane pine ki bhi shay nahi mil rahi hai. Aur jo chawal nahi mil rahe hain, nahi sabzi hai. Idhar kuch bhi nahi bacha hai. In Balochistan, the Pakistan Army is delivering aid by helicopter. 
the province has seen widespread devastation, including the washing away of key rail and road networks, as well as breakdowns in telecommunications and power infrastructure. Initial estimates of the damage across the country have been put at $10 billion. Aid has flowed in from a number of countries, but charities in Pakistan have warned that there are still millions who have not been reached with aid and relief efforts. And more on news from Pakistan. Former Prime Minister and PTI Chief Imran Khan has slammed the Pakistan government for delaying elections, saying it is doing so in order to appoint an army chief of its choice. Khan said that the leaders of the coalition government have only come into power to end their corruption cases. Opposition PTI Chairman and ousted Prime Minister Imran Khan has slammed Pakistan's coalition government led by PM Shahbaz Sharif for stalling the elections, saying that the delay is being done to appoint an army chief of their own choice in November. Addressing a gathering in Faisalabad on Sunday, Khan said that the government has destroyed the country in four months and has only come into power to end corruption cases against the coalition leaders. He added that only free and fair elections can ensure political stability in Pakistan. In November, I am going to army chief in November. And these two Zardari and Nawaz Sharif are the whole try to get an army chief who has taken his favorite. He wants to bring his army chief. The PTI chief also warned of another wave of inflation over the directives of the International Monetary Fund, IMF. Khan has repeatedly demanded snap elections since April when he was ousted in a parliamentary vote. And in news from Afghanistan, two Russian embassy staff in Afghan capital Kabul were killed when a suicide bomber detonated explosives near the entrance of the embassy on Monday in a blast that also killed over 20 others, local media reports suggested. Police said the attacker was shot dead by armed guards as he approached the gate. No group had claimed the responsibility for the blast till the last reports came in. And moving on, at a time when no country has recognized the Taliban, which took over Afghanistan last August, and the international community has pressed the Islamist group on human rights, the Deputy Minister of Justice has said that Afghanistan does not require a constitution and can resolve its issues with only the application of Islamic law. Abdul Karim Haider, the Deputy Minister of Justice of the Islamic Emirate on Sunday, said that Afghanistan does not require a constitution and can resolve its issues with only the application of Islamic law. In a presser on Sunday, Heather stated that Hanafi law serves as the framework for resolving people's problems. He also noted that all women should be provided their rights under Islamic law when the conditions are favourable. This comes as the Taliban government last Wednesday marked the first anniversary of the withdrawal of US-led forces calling on the international community to accept them as the legitimate government. No country has recognized the Taliban who took over Afghanistan with a speed and ease last August. The international community has pressed the Taliban on human rights, particularly those of girls and women whose access to school and work has been limited. It has also urged the Taliban to stop harassing critics, activists and journalists. The Taliban say they are discussing the matter of girls' education and deny cracking down on dissent. And in news from Sri Lanka, constitutional amendment bill trimming presidential powers is expected to become law in a couple of weeks, Sri Lanka's Foreign Minister Ali Sabri said on Monday. The bill is yet to be voted on in Parliament and requires a two-thirds majority in the House to become law. Sri Lanka's Foreign Minister Ali Sabri said on Monday, a constitutional amendment bill trimming presidential powers is expected to become law in a couple of weeks. Sabri told reporters at the Foreign Ministry that the amendment would bring back participatory governance. The proposed amendment would establish a constitutional council and nine independent commissions to improve governance, promote human rights and increase audit oversight of government agencies and bolster anti-graft investigation. Within next couple of weeks, we are planning 
to bring that into law. So once the 22nd Amendment comes into law, most of the structures which were introduced in by the 19th Amendment will be back on track. So there is uh, more participatory governance in that. A two-thirds majority in the House is required for the bill to become law. It was proposed to help shore up stability and diffuse unrest provoked by the country's worst financial crisis in decades. The crisis came to a head in July when then-President Gotabaya Rajpaksa, who was accused of economic mismanagement, fled the country and resigned, replaced by Ranil Vikrame Singhe. Meanwhile, Gotabaya Rajpaksa, who returned Sri Lanka after he had fled in July during economic unrest, was provided with an official residence and security by the government on Saturday. Now that he has been stripped of constitutional immunity, he could face legal action over forced disappearances of activists soon after the end of the country's long civil war. Rajpaksa was then a powerful official at the Defence Ministry under the presidency of his older brother Mahinda Rajpaksa. And moving on, Indian Army Chief General Manoj Pandey was conferred with the honorary rank of General of the Nepali Army by President Bidya Devi Bhandari on Monday at a special ceremony at the President's official residence in Kathmandu. Pandey, who arrived on a five-day official visit to Nepal on Sunday, was also presented with a sword during the function. The practice follows a seven-decade tradition of conferring Army Chiefs of each other countries with the honorary title. Earlier in the day, Indian Army Chief handed over various non-lethal military equipment to his Nepalese counterpart, General Prabhu Ram Sharma, aimed at enhancing military cooperation between the two armies. The Army Chief also laid a wreath and paid homage to the martyrs at Bir Samarak and received a guard of honour at headquarters of the Nepali Army, where he called on General Prabhu Ram Sharma and discussed ways to strengthen bilateral defence cooperation. The Indian Army Chief is in Nepal to enhance existing bilateral defence ties and strengthen cooperation in areas of mutual interest. This is General Pandey's first visit to Nepal as Chief of Army Staff. And St. Teresa was remembered on her 25th death anniversary on Monday by members of the Missionaries of Charity, the Global Order of Nuns founded by her in India's eastern Kolkata city. Also called the Saint of the Gutter, Mother Teresa is known globally for her extraordinary love and service for the poor, the homeless and the diseased. Missionaries of Charity, the global order of nuns founded by St. Teresa in India's Kolkata city, offered prayers on Monday to mark her 25th death anniversary. Sisters of the Mother's House, where the ethnic Albanian nun lived and died at the age of 87, sang hymns and lit candles near the altruistic saint's tomb. Mother Teresa was popularly known as the Saint of the Cutter, for her extraordinary love and dedication for the poor, the homeless and the diseased, which propelled her to an iconic status globally. Mother has gone away, but mother continues to live. Mother died and yet she's alive. And how is she alive? Through the works of the missions of charity. What she began continues. Mother Teresa was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 1979 for her social work. She was canonized by the Roman Catholic Church in 2016, just 19 years after her death. However, she is still addressed as Mother Teresa. But that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night.